This is the Motu M2, and it's a little bit different from the typical devices that I would usually review. It's not a DAC, it's not an amp, it's kind of both of those and a little bit more, because this is an audio interface, meaning it also has an ADC, or Analog to Digital Converter. It's primarily intended to be used as a microphone interface, allowing you to hook up microphones or instruments, if you'd prefer, to actually record the output of those to a digital file. But, given as it has a pretty decent built-in ESS DAC and a headphone output, it's also something which a lot of people might use as a one-and-done, all-in-one unit for their desktop headphone setup. The external build is pretty nice, especially for a device of this price. Two combination XLR and quarter-inch jack inputs, both of which can also supply phantom power for microphones that require it. Monitoring options that allow you to route the audio from the inputs to the outputs and keep an ear on what's happening. An LCD display which also allows you to visually monitor the levels of both the inputs and outputs, and that's something which usually you'd have to pay quite a bit more to get a device that has that, so that's a really nice feature to see at this price point. And on the far right, there is also a headphone output with a separate volume control from the main rear outputs. Those rear outputs come in either single-ended RCA or balanced TRS, and whilst usually TRS jack connectors are the single-ended option, they're single-ended with the three points of contact for headphones, where you've got two channels, but here, where you've got one for each channel, it's no different from the three connections on a balanced XLR cable, so you can safely adapt these to a balanced input of an amp, and it will actually be running balanced, it's just a different connection because XLR wouldn't fit on this device. But whilst the build quality overall is really nice, there are a few caveats to the actual sound and usage of the device that you'll probably want to be aware of, or things that I should mention in terms of how I've actually reviewed this device, because again, it's a little bit different from the usual DAX and amps that I'd be testing. The first thing to mention is that the headphone output on this is a little bit limited in power, and that does mean that you're kind of restricted in what headphones you can run on it. I wasn't able to use my usual Sesvaras for evaluating this, for example, because it just can't run them properly, but if you've got some ZMFs, some HG800s, that kind of thing, pretty much any dynamic driver headphone or more sensitive planars, you're probably not going to have any issues. Another slight caveat for this is that I don't have any measurement data for this at the moment, because when I went to measure it, it was not behaving all that well. I tried to do some measurements, just my normal suite, and it just kind of gave me the finger, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm going to try and sort that out and get some proper measurement data sorted later, but for now, unfortunately, this is just going to be my subjective opinion of the device. One other thing to mention is that right now I've got a little bit of a cold. My ears are a little stuffy and so my hearing is not necessarily as good as it usually is, so I wanted to make sure that I got a second opinion on this, and Resolve also has a Motu M2, so I asked him what he thought about it. All right, so Cameron wanted a second opinion on the Motu M2, and so I'm, I'm gonna give you guys my judgment of this product as well. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna let you know that I did not test this subjectively, so I did not, I'm not basing my judgment here on this product on how it sounded to me. I'm basing this purely on the data that you get, and the reason for this is because how you attach meaning to the various different measurable properties that we find in sound may be vastly different from how I attach meaning, and so in order to give you a factual, objective assessment of this product, I'm not able to color my impressions of it by listening to it. That would unfairly lead and potentially bias your opinion when it comes to this product and the sound quality that it may or may not deliver. Now I'm gonna skip ahead here and stop wasting your guys' time because I only have a little bit of space left in my SD card. Uh, so I'm gonna jump ahead and give you guys my judgment of this product right away. But just before I do that, know that the most important thing when it comes to sound quality that you can do is to make sure Unfortunately, it seems like Andrew ran out of space there, but hopefully that was still at least somewhat helpful. Now, in terms of the headphones that I was actually using when reviewing this, because this is a recording interface, it's gonna be used by, well, a lot of artists and actual producers making stuff, not just necessarily people that are wanting to use headphones in a hi-fi setup. I wanted to make sure that I'm listening to this as the artist intended, and what better headphones to do that with than Beats Pro by Dr. Dre. Now, these headphones, as the marketing material clearly says, give you exactly what the artist was intended, and that's shown in the measurements too. You see, by getting rid of a lot of the mid-range content, you can really allow people to just focus purely on the mid-bass content, and this, at the end of the day, is what the artist is really wanting you to hear. If you play something like Fetty Wap on a JBL speaker, for example, it's a pretty fantastic experience, but these headphones are trying as best as possible to replicate that in a more portable and personal form factor, and they really do a great job. 
But one thing to mention with this is that it is actually a USB powered device. So there's no external wall wart, there's no IEC connection. It just runs entirely off the power delivered over a single USB-C connection. And that does mean that depending on what device you're actually using to power this, it could potentially have an impact on the performance of the device. So because I'm reviewing this and I wanted to make sure that there were no bottlenecks or anything restricting it, I actually ran this off an Intona 7055-D, which is an FPGA based extremely high performance low noise isolator. It's really good, but it is quite expensive. It's actually about twice the cost of the Moto M2 itself. So just to make sure though, that even with that, there wasn't any lingering noise whatsoever. I then ran that into an Intona 7055-C, which again is an extremely high performance isolator and actually has double the regulators that the 7055-D does. But just to make sure that there was no lingering noise that could possibly get through even after that, I then ran the Intona isolator into a JDS Synapse isolator, which is using Texas Instruments new isolation chip. And that's about $49, so that's quite a bit more affordable, but from my measurements, it seems to do exceptionally well. But just to make sure that there was no lingering noise whatsoever, even after all of that, I then ran the JDS Synapse into a JDS Synapse isolator, just to make sure that with those four, we shouldn't have any problems in terms of USB power. But there is one more slight problem with this, which is that a lot of people are probably going to be using this at their desk. It's not likely to be on a separate rack or anything, especially if you're plugging headphones directly into it. And that means that if it is on the same desk that you are typing, moving your mouse and all that kind of stuff, there's going to be some vibrations which could potentially impact the performance of the device. So just to make sure that that wasn't a bottleneck whilst I was doing my reviewing, I made sure to use a set of isoacoustics isolators just to prevent any kind of vibrations getting through from the desk to the unit itself. But just to be absolutely sure that those isolators were getting all of the vibrations sorted out, I used a set of isoacoustics isolators to isolate the isolators from the desk, but I was still a little bit concerned. So I used a set of isoacoustics isolators to isolate from the isolators that are isolating from the desk. And then just for absolute good measure, I used a set of isoacoustics isolators to isolate the isolators that were isolating from the isolators that were isolating from the desk, just to make sure that there are absolutely no vibrations that could possibly get through. And we know that the device is performing exactly Exactly as intended. And actually, I almost forgot to mention this. Whilst we are powering this device via USB, and we've done all we can to make sure that the USB power itself is as clean and isolated as possible, one thing that we've not done is made sure that the PC that is powering it is getting clean power. Otherwise, it's not doing much good to just have a USB isolator there. So I made sure that for all of my evaluation, the PC that was powering the Moto M2 was running on a power conditioner. So I'm using a Furman SPR16EI, which is a voltage regulator providing a stable 230 volts output, but it's also got some pretty effective power conditioning filtering in as well. And just to make sure that there was no lingering noise whatsoever that could possibly get through to the output, I then routed the power from the Furman into an AudioQuest Niagara 5000 power conditioner, just to make sure that it filters out any lingering noise that could possibly be left and we're getting an ultra stable power supply to the PC itself. And just to be 110% certain about that, I actually routed the output of the Niagara 5000 into an AudioQuest Niagara 3000 power conditioner, just to again make sure that any lingering noise that was picked up was filtered out and we're getting as clean as possible a supply to the PC so that then the USB isolators aren't impacted by any of that. And just to be 140% certain, I actually then routed the output of the AudioQuest Niagara 3000 into an AudioQuest Niagara 1200 just to again make sure that anything that was possibly left was completely filtered out and everything is as clean as can be. Oh, and just in case anyone was worried, for all of these power conditioners, they are of course using isoacoustics isolators to isolate each other from the rest of the stack so that none of the bad vibrations or anything can get through any of the power conditioners or through the power cable to impact the PC. And in fact, I even put the PC itself on a set of isoacoustics isolators too. And one more thing which I made sure to do was to use a DAC weight, because obviously you don't want to leave the top of the DAC uncovered because then vibrations can get in from the top. So I made sure to use a DAC weight and because, I mean, it's obvious I shouldn't need to tell you, but the amount of money that you spend on something is directly proportional to the benefit you get. So for the DAC weight, I made sure to get the most expensive device I had on hand and use that to weight the Moto M2 down. And of course, that's supported by a set of isoacoustics vibration isolators as well. Now, I did want to make sure that the Moto M2 was as high up as possible, because obviously if it's further away from the ground, then you're going to get less ground plane noise. But unfortunately, with the DAC weight, my insurance agent said that they wouldn't insure me if the Aperio was about 10 feet off the floor. So I had to forgo that. I'm really sorry. I don't think it's going to bottleneck things too much. And I felt that the DAC weight aspect was probably the more important one. So I went with that instead. So with all of that being said, I then plugged in the headphones. Again, I'm using the Beats Pro and I've modded these to run balanced and I'm using the most expensive silver cable that I have just to make sure that there's no bottlenecks in terms of transient performance or anything like that. And 
The first thing that I noticed was that it sounded kind of grainy, and I was worried that this was the device itself at first. As it turns out, it wasn't, it was that there were just some grains in the headphones, so if that's an issue that you experience, just make sure there's no sand or rice or dandruff or anything in your headphones and you should be good to go. But with all that said and done, how does it sound? Well, the first thing that I did was try doing a blind ABX test using my physical ABX test device against a couple other high-end DACs, the Holo Audio May and the DCS Lena. And what I found was that I was not able to successfully pass the blind test and tell a difference between the two. But I think that's in large part due to the fact that I've taken all of the power conditioners, USB filtering, expensive cables and stuff off of those DACs and put it onto the Motu M2. So at this point, those DACs are so bottlenecked and held back, whereas the Motu M2 is so so unrestricted that they're on a more level playing field. And once I spent about five or six thousand pounds on some extra BNC cables, high-end power cables, uh, network filtering, and an external DDC as well, uh, and also changed the fuse to a purple one, then in a sighted test I was pretty confident that those sounded quite a bit better. So I think it's just the number of accessories that I had on the M2, and once you compare them in a more sighted and level playing field, uh, it was a lot easier to say that yeah, those ones definitely sounded better. But overall I'd say the Motu M2 was sounding pretty good. But you know what else makes me feel good after a long day of reviewing and setting up audio gear and testing stuff? BetterHelp therapy sessions. One thing I need to mention is we actually cancelled the BetterHelp sponsorship because when we spoke to them they told us that actually you can just EQ negative feelings away so try that maybe it'll work for you who knows but in the meantime I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you've got any questions that you wanted to ask me or other wiggly air enthusiasts about music DAX amps silver cables vibration isolators power conditioners quantum stickers special fuses or anything like that then come and say hey on the headphones.com forum or come and say hey on the headphones.com discord server in the meantime I'm Golden Sound you're watching the headphone show by headphones.com and I'll see you next time